soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's Friday, November 13th. That's right, folks. Friday the 13th. It's the program. My name's Robbie Coates. My co-host, the Victrix. Victrix, how are you? How are we doing, uh, Mr. Coates and uh, America? How are we? I think America, America's doing okay, even though some Americans might be worried. I think that we're better off than uh, people realize because uh, good things are coming on the horizon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you got to see the silver linings in all this, uh, Victrix. Rob, um, I'm going to say something right off the bat. Did yeah. you see Obama on, on television talking, calling Trump a racist? Did you see that? Uh, recently? Are you talking about like just today? Oh. Yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday or the day before. No. I mean, they've been, they've been calling that. him a racist since, you know, four or five years ago. Yeah, I know he's but been calling no, him. just yesterday. Just yesterday or the day before. No, missed it. What did he say exactly? I mean, you know, basically just, you know, calling Trump a racist and, you know, uh, everybody just calling out basically his entire crew, you know, his entire base. But oh, mostly, you know, the uh, uh, you mean flyover country and, and, and the, de the deplorables. Well, look, Obama has been taking jabs since he got in 2008, 2009. He's been taking jabs at this country nonstop. I mean. Obama's been out of the White House for a while now. He's just now getting his feet wet again in some uh, politics, and he just takes. He never jabs. disappeared, really. I mean, what's he? Oh, uh, he, oh. why? Jabs. Why can't he? Yeah. You're talking about Obama taking jabs. He's always taking yeah. jabs. That's all he's ever done. Is that, that's what that's what his entire presidency was was take jabs. Who, I mean, one of the first jabs the he hell? took was against the Harvard police. Was was that it? It was Harvard, right? Telling them they were stupid, they behaved stupidly. I remember that was one of the first famous, uh, famous. What the hell? Well, he I'm sure he everything. told. I'm sure he may have told the Harvard police that they're stupid, but I'm I'm damn near positive he never answered any of the emergency calls where people needed help. You, you probably didn't see Obama anywhere around any real emergencies or anything and besides like a on TV. BLM emergency. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, where is the? You know, I lost and, you there. I, lost I said, you where, there, where is where has he been for those? Where has he been for the BLM emergencies? I mean, I mean, he's basically they're all they've all been denying that there are any emergencies. I mean, we had uh, Nadler saying that the whole thing was um, a f what he didn't say hoax, but he said. Uh, you can't a myth, you a myth, can't a myth, just. A myth, a myth. You just can't call everybody racist and assume everybody that's not a Democrat is racist. And that's their, how is that? How in the hell who told these people that that was some option to campaign on? You're all racists. I mean, do they really think that that was going to be their momentum that pushed them over? I don't think it was to be honest with you, but it, they're definitely a whole summer's worth of uh, well, they think I, I BLM think... on display. It, it's just ridiculous with the sports and everything. But Obama designed BLM. This is it's for Obama. He's loving it because he put all this stuff. He orchestrated this, and <clears throat> as it's unfolding, he's just kind of stepping back in. Oh, everybody, let me be clear one more time. Let me be clear. And let Michelle is let like, oh, well, if you guys, Michelle Obama says. No. Yeah, if you guys uh, are are worried about your safety, well, you better be, and you better vote Biden if you want who's your that, health Michael? and safety. I don't know. It, that's such a that would be insane, but it's Michelle. It's Michelle. We've uh, heard things. Yeah, but it's yeah. Michelle. Well, you know, I'm just making fun, but it, it, it's it fun. It is fun. It is fun. It's a gift that keeps on giving. You're not lying. These people have a lot of. Uh, they have a lot of issues. They they keep kind of just. Well, they you know, don't, so is I'll, there I'll any tell substance? you what. I'll tell you what. They're persistent. Yeah, so they what about persistent. what about this uh this thing about the, about their the the two daughters are not really Michelle's daughters that yeah, we've heard that. Is there any substance to that? Is there any is there any truth? Well, to I mean, people people have a lot of theories on that. And they yeah, but is there any the, truth uh, to it? <clears throat> well, look. I mean, do we know his past? Just... Obama's past is so dodgy and. 
the whole thing's real dodgy. Everything What's the deal just with the seems... picture of the two of them in college? That one, the one where 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 they the uh, some people claim that it's that it is Michelle Obama, but it's Michael something or other, and it it's 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 a dude who you are led to believe is now Michelle. The faces look very much the same, and you know you you can definitely tell it's Barack. And I think that they but they were hanging. There was somebody else in that picture too. It was. I mean, that would be an. <laughs> one hell of an orchestrated thing to pull off i mean that's that's a task but if they pull well, that off in that fashion but i'll tell something you what that you'd necessarily pull off i mean it just is something that you would keep secret i think <laughs> yes. in fact you know if, if barack obama <laughs> is actually uh a gay man and these is this where this is this where this episode is going and and, and then uh michelle is actually a uh uh transgender woman uh as they say these days and those daughters are adopted or stand-ins or something that would be pretty wild that well would be, one and it would be just be something you hide is my point you know and, and people who go digging around and then it's easy for the media to cover up for anything these days you can see it doesn't matter if it were real the media would say it wouldn't be real and then that's be the end of it they have the control well the you know? obama made people chase him on some of these things like the birth certificate that's why Trump yeah, was on him. him. Well, it took years to get that copy. So people, once again, um, they said it was Photoshopped. It's got the layers. Yeah. yeah <clears> and course, uh, course. a lot of people worked for free pro bono on that. They were glad to give their time up to try to uh, bust them on it. But, of course, he produced something, and they stuck with it. And everybody in, in Congress and the House was forced to say, He's a citizen. There's no doubt about it. But even though, you know, he has the Jakarta school and, uh, you know, Muslim. Well, why does his brother say that, he's not? Does he does he or does he not have a brother that lives in Africa well, somewhere? Look, we, we can go down this rabbit hole. There's a lot of questions. Yeah, this is a rabbit hole. It's not where I wanted to go, but here we are. But but my my main thing with Obama is this is why. See, with Trump, they just attack him. They just attack them, they attack them, they attack them. There's not much to really attack them on because Trump's done a lot for people and barely enjoys himself. I mean, you know, but with Obama, we, people went after him on the birth certificate because it was missing his past. <clears throat> He's got several different options and, you know, yeah, potential we never saw the actual... mixes, potential mixes of his bloodline and stuff and, well, so who you know, is his brother? And he never and he never really talked too much about his mom and his grandparents. Like you might find one clip on YouTube once in eight years where he mentioned them because he's always talking about being on the streets and everybody being racially negative towards him. That is strange. Growing up. And I'm just thinking what I'm pretty sure he grew up with his white grandparents. Yeah. I mean uh, who, and he became he, a senator pretty young, he, right? Well, I mean, congressman. He, what's he complaining was he about? He was a senator. Sounds like he grew up pretty, you know, had a good life. And I remember had a lot he came of out of nowhere. I didn't even know who the hell he was, and all of a sudden he's running for president. Who the fuck was Barack Obama? What the hell my, is going my, on? What I'm, where I'm going with this, where I'm going with this is kind of like Kamala Harris. They just, they have to strictly identify uh, black American, African American to try to rev that base Isn't she up. also a Chinese American? She's a Chinese, Asian, Jamaican. Uh, yeah, Asian American. What is that? African American. Can she, she get in know, trouble I, for saying that? Most black people don't like being called African Americans. Their heritage either doesn't go, you know, it, it comes from somewhere else or, it, you know, like some guy, I've heard some guys say, hey, I don't, I wasn't born in Africa. I was born here. I'm just, just an American. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you know. pretty stupid. My uncle is a uh, was born in Africa, and he's not black, and he lives in America. Doesn't that make him an African American? Sure, absolutely, it does. And common sense people can say that. Just yes, Rob, that's true. Well, it like, makes sense. It is common no, sense. It's nobody, just... everybody's just busy every day. No one has time to think about these things. The liberals want to focus on and just ruin everything. It's just the, their their attacks on us don't. It just doesn't exist. We're not thinking about any of the stuff they're trying to pin us on. We are just working. We're, we're focused on things. Nobody hates anybody. 
what is going on here? What well, is so, going on here? Is what, this just a control? Or do these people just want total control, Rob? Well, yeah. Take it away. Yes, they want total control. It's what it's. I mean, folks, I find people searching for reasons. They want to know why, you know, why would people, I mean, my, uh, my dad, who taught me how to identify commies at a very young age, uh, even he can't really understand the the force that is evil in the universe. Uh, I, it is a force in the universe, ladies and gentlemen. I know that it's not studied in physics books. Folks, I understand physics. I'm an aerospace engineer. Listen, I, 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 when I say force in the universe, I'm telling you, it is something out there that we don't understand. It is real. It's real. It's out there, and it infiltrates people's minds, people who are weak, people who are susceptible, corruptible, seeps into the cracks. It floats around out there in higher dimensions. It doesn't like you. It doesn't like people. It has this animosity towards human beings, and it just, you know, it wants to, it's like a mean kid uh stepping on ants uh and you know with a magnifying glass that's what evil evil's real people and and i swear to you in january back around january sometime this blanket of darkness just enveloped the world the whole there's there's a blanket of darkness a blanket of evil covering the world look at what's going on in the world look at what's going on in the world uh, uh, victories what do you what, what do you think about what's going on in the rest of the world how truly i mean can, there's look there's no evidence of any any covid anywhere there's we got we got people saying in our own country here we got governors saying well it looks like christmas is going to be the most deadly it's going to be the most deadly time for covid we've seen we got a lockdown again and yet everywhere else everywhere even in these places that are hot spots they're just like where you and i are victrix there's nowhere to be found and yet they want to lock everyone down and kill everyone's businesses and, and keep kids out of school keep them from growing up and having normal childhoods for what there's no evidence of anything anywhere and look at how bad it is in the rest of the world they're sending people to camps in new zealand who refuse to get tested uh in in uh i think i just read somewhere someone sent to the group chat here um stand by ladies and gentlemen that in which place was it where is it that they want to text the government Oh, yeah. Permission to leave your home. Yeah. You permission text. to leave your home in Brazil. No, 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 no. Where is this? So much stuff comes into this. Who cares this where chat. it's at? That's it's what they want. Yeah. It's, so what do you think? Just, I mean, the real world really is part of the evil. part of the stupid network. Can I, can I get your commentary on on the nature of true evil? I mean, it really what do you think about what is where what is obviously I think it's evident to everyone at this <clears> point. That there is no threat outside and that people really are just trying to turn the world's population into some kind of slave population. The, to, to what end people are not fully aware yet, but people okay. are really, okay. really coming around to it. Don't you, you, you agree, right? You know, coming off of a uh, floor all day, crawling around, installing a floor, and also being in entrepreneurial positions as well. Um, you know, hard work. A lot of people think it's slavery and this and that. Nobody's forcing me to head there every day. I'm up early. I'm the first skate. I would say the name of my coffee shop, but I'm not. But yeah, I, they, I can wise. tell you this: I'm I'm there every day. I know. I'm the first guy. I'm the first guy through the door every day. You know, I'm doing a four to six shot cannonball. Italian coffee, black espresso, a uh, little bit of coffee in there just to balance it out. But, you know, you can say that I'm slaving all day, crawling around this floor or not. But I'll tell you what, um, a lot of people would, would kill for these opportunities and, uh, and the freedom and the, and, and the total freedom of how we do it. Everybody's doing their thing to the fullest. Now, there's other parts in the world where, I mean, I, I like watching these uh, vloggers. I kind of got hooked on the uh, Simon and uh, Bald. And uh, I've heard of them. I've heard of them. Yeah, Simon, Bald, and uh, oh, geez, there's one, one of the other guys. But these guys go to India everywhere. And I mean, there's just so many places in the world. They just don't have. And, and what I like about some of these places that are just under, you know, they're not developed dirt roads everything people are, are happy they're just chilling they're doing their thing um yeah you know i i just feel like they're grooving with a little more and i feel like people here that might be on welfare or this or that 
might not be that appreciative of it and the welfare, you know, just rob us blind and F this, F the country, get all the welfare you can get. Fuck them. a lot of people who you are, you know, I them. feel like people don't um, have to have that respect for it. Like, man, look at what we're getting this help from this great government. They're giving us these checks. Well, so we I mean, can... there's a lot of people who are on but, welfare in these Democrats. They, these they, when you say otherwise evil, not be on welfare, they might otherwise have better opportunities. Well, there's yeah. people that are on welfare for 15, 20 years. I mean, that's what I mean. You know, what, you know, like I said, but there's a lot of people that get hooked on the welfare and they, and they, they more or less back up and, uh, you know, they kind of nest, you know, and then time, time rips by, rips by, rips by. So when you could be out, maybe find something else, you know, you could be on something else and eventually try to shake that welfare. But there's other countries where, you know, you can just see it in India. They'd love that kind of welfare. I don't know if they have. Well, now welfare. we're talking about people like Joe Biden who would like to see more people on welfare. We're talking about slavery in America, ladies and gentlemen. We're what? talking about Look, the right to work disappearing, resort. basically. It's a last resort. I, I'm not against it. Against but what? I don't I don't like people that play welfare? the welfare. Yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm not talking about welfare. what's happening in America right now. But yeah, it shouldn't be the, told the, to shut the main down. thing. I'm yeah, talking ahead, about Rob. people being told to shut down. I'm talking about people being their businesses. Look, you 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 run a business and you're a hard worker and I feel like that you wouldn't mind more work. You want bigger, better jobs. You're out there looking to land some kind of million dollar job. It's not you don't feel like a slave. You're an entrepreneur. I um, consume opportunity. I'm a I'm an oppor opportunity consumer. When you get a call, whether it's a good or bad job, you okay. you go after it. It's because you don't know how, you know, how plentiful it's going to be. And sometimes when you turn down, Listen, you want to talk stuff, about not you, knowing it, it how can all go away. The how universe will take it away from you. It'll take you. It away okay. You want to talk about the universe taking something away from you. Let's talk about the government taking something away from you. Let's imagine that you were in a different business, not a construction related field. Let's imagine that you were in the restaurant industry at the beginning of this. And that you were told or some other business like a haircut, like imagine you know, just anything, any other business. Imagine that you were told that you were not essential. Imagine being, imagine being a person. Trying to live, trying to live a life, trying to raise a family, maybe. <clears throat> okay, Just imagine can you're I trying respond to, take care to of that? You. you were told that you were not essential. Can I respond? Can I respond? Maybe. Sometime. Sometime. Today. Okay, initially, here's what you have to do. Because I was knocked out of the business world in 2008. A real depression hit. A real economic downturn. I want to know how more... you feel Hold about on, being I'm telling told you. you're not essential. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I lost my business that was on fire in 2007. 2008 gone no one ever called that phone number again so <clears throat> here's your options unless somebody's gonna hook you up or pull you out and and really help you on your feet your options are to shift gears okay you gotta drop it in the second you're in fifth gear you thought you were in fifth gear for a long time sometimes you're gonna get this is what's happening to these restaurants and places now and some of these restaurants and places, um, they've been in business 30 years, this, that. Uh, if you're a restaurant on the boulevard and, you know, you've been in business 30 years, I'm hoping you have a few months, a year to stay alive on. Um, but what I'm trying to say is initially all you can do is, is make an adjustment you might have to look for other work. You might have to look for different ways to sell your product. Victrix, if you Victrix, do, if you Victrix, do haircuts, Victrix, you Victrix, might have to Victrix, call your Victrix, clients. Victrix, Victrix, Victrix. Wow. I want to know how you would feel about being told you were not essential. I'm telling, and I just not, told you that I, I've had my business taken away. I know, I know what what it is, you know, and it's kind of the same thing. No, but, but, but you're, you're. I'm talking it's almost about the being same told thing. by an authority figure that you're not allowed to work that you're not allowed to work. You're not allowed to go seek opportunities because you're not important enough. Well, essentially it's similar. Okay. But no, I understand that. And I, and like I said, for the first time ever, people in construction weren't destroyed first. Okay. People don't get that in 2008, eight and nine, when the economy collapsed, people were still eating out all these businesses, the hotel business, everybody was still flying nobody was affected but the construction industry and maybe some suppliers so this go around 
the constr what what Trump did, and this is why the it, everything can because because Trump knows what he's doing. He kept the construction people going and the realtors going, real estate, which drives everything. Without construction and real estate moving, you have nothing, nothing. So, but if I owned a restaurant, and I'll tell you what, some of these restaurants, they really pulled through and they really worked through this. Some of them didn't make it. Some of them are still shut down and, and they're weathering the storm. But first, first initial thing you can do when you get knocked in the teeth that hard and you get knocked back and they say you can't open and you say, fuck, what do I do? You got to start making moves immediately and you got to fucking run like your life depends on it and you got to make moves and make things happen. Uh, you and have you to keep fight. your business open, ladies and gentlemen. You have to not shut down because all these all these uh, COVID restrictions, regulations that these governors are implementing, all these edicts, all these mandates, they're 100% illegal. They're inhuman, okay? They are crimes against humanity. No one has the right to tell you you can't make a living for yourself. No one has the right to tell you to cover your face up. You are. It's your identity. There's no evidence of any danger from horizon to horizon matter where you go. They don't have the right, the authority. People, people, look, you intellectual idiots who want to argue that there's some sort of uh, constitutional authority to do this under some sort of national emergency. What, are you having fun? Are you having fucking fun? Do you like this or something? What the fuck's the matter with you? What are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? You, 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 are, are you are you a full time student in school? Are they paying for you to live at school and just do degree after degree after degree and get indoctrinated further and further and further and further? People are dying. People are losing everything that they were. Their dreams. Their dreams. You only get one life. You know, I'm glad you're living your dream of telling people that they should be losing their dreams. But these people are losing their dreams. What if we took your dream from you? You know, what if we just said, fuck you? All right. Ladies and gentlemen. While we're on COVID updates, Trump actually uh, held a press conference in the uh, garden at the White House, the Rose Garden. And, um, he didn't talk about the election. He didn't talk about anything. All he did was talk about the vaccine and he had his COVID task force come out and discuss everything, the vaccine, this and that. He turned around and walked away. I think what Trump's doing, because you can see the, sh the, the shift in the news. Trump, Trump is literally, ha he has traps set. He has strategies in place. He Trump is traps. working. He Trump traps. He is Trump working traps. this system. I'm picking up on something here where the news, all all of the news is starting to talk about COVID spikes. It's spiking. It's spiking. It. Yeah, I thought cases, it was. I though, thought it's been dying. I thought it. I thought it's been spiking since the get go. From what they've yeah. been saying. Yeah. On these charts, now, all of a sudden, charts. Trump's not talking to anybody. He came out today. He prevented his team and what they did and this and that. He said that anybody that needs a ventilator has one. And then he turned around and they walked off after everybody spoke. And uh, I feel like what we're, you know, Trump has set aside. We're watching the news. They're, they're trying to move their narrative. And uh, he's letting them. He's letting them. He is letting them. Well, yeah, right that's, in front that's of part our of the, eyes. Of the deal. Right the in front of, of our eyes. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the only way to destroy them is to let them destroy them, and that's eventually that's what that's what you're wit witnessing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're going to see revealed to you the uh, largest, uh, uh, the largest uh, documented uh, examples of voter fraud in human history, probably, probably in human history, probably in any uh, since since. You're going as far back as you can find voting records for. I mean, except for in North Korea or where you know Iran. I guess they don't even vote in North Korea, probably. But, you know, he looks have... good. Trump looked really good today. He looked like he was so well rested. First time he's gotten any rest. He's not talking to the press at all. They've betrayed him in so many different ways. And he's he's got everybody on a freeze. He's got everybody on a freeze. He's going to let the courts handle this. He's catching up on some rest. He's making plans well what do you think about He's, all these people building up joe biden as president-elect even still uh, it was taken it didn't it didn't, didn't didn't the um uh he doesn't have as well, many votes it's tough it's tough because there's no excitement or momentum 
you know, it's like, what, what, like look at what every look at what's happening. Look at what's happening. It's like Joe Biden's in. You got Cuomo and Lori Lightfoot all over the place. They're like, oh, oh, they feel like they have their hands in the pot. They feel like they have their hands on the control center. They feel like they can just. Well, that's what they want. Mm, okay. Yeah. You know, they feel like they have their hands on the controls. They all do. It's amazing. It's amazing. Trump called it. This well, they guy lust to have their hands on the controls. They lust for power. <clears throat> it's all it is. And that's what I keep trying to get everyone to wrap their brains around. And we still uh, somehow, somehow I have to articulate it so that it just clicks with everybody. I got to figure out a way that it's evil and that you have to be able to identify look people people uh people are still just they can't they're in shock over this notion that the that the government would want to do them harm them personally individually that they would just not care about them this is under this is something that you can't even and some people it it you they cannot even entertain these notions it's like it's like trying to tell them that uh that you're a wizard from I don't know, or that you're, you, you, you're, you're, you, it's like, I don't know, Doc Brown trying to convince someone that he's a, he's a time traveler. You cannot get these people to accept, even entertain the notion that government isn't looking out for their best interests. There's got to be some way to break, break through that with these people. I mean, eventually, because I, I fear that they, that they don't realize it until you ever, you ever seen that photo of, uh, of Jews being marched into the, into the incinerators, into the ovens, into this little building. This, this, these, they got these piles of, you know, these rows of people converging on this building with this chimney with this black smoke pouring out. And they just walk, they're literally just walking to their deaths at that point. And I, I fear that that's that, that point that they realize that they, you know, they finally realize we have to stop this before anything like that happens. Because this is, ladies and gentlemen, holocausts have happened in the world in our lifetimes. Hitler was not the only one. He wasn't even the worst one. I mean, he was the worst in some regard. I feel like it, he was, he was, he, he brought on, he had the whole machine going, the genocide machine. Um, and it was really horrifying, right? But uh, he was not the only one, not, not in our lifetimes even. Okay, there have been holocausts in our lifetimes. Did you even know? Did you even know? How did this happen? How did it happen with Hitler in Germany in, in, in a society that was advanced, sophisticated, technologically advanced, uh, high society, inventors of the jet engine and nuclear physics? How does that happen? How does it happen? My question to all of you is, how on earth do you think what's going on now does not lead to that? How do you think it doesn't lead to that? This must end, ladies and gentlemen. Victrix. I'll tell you, I've been... I've been studying these politics for a little while now. This new era, I kind of came in at, in this new era, and that's what you know. That's where my story begins. Now, I've been studying these guys for a long time, and uh, it, it's the same stuff over and over again. Uh, you know, that's some of the stuff you learn uh, from the professor, Mister Limbaugh. We could call him Professor Limbaugh. Professor Limbaugh. But, uh, you know, you learn that. These guys, they come with the same playbook every time. They stick with their playbook. They do. And, and you know, the Democrats aren't afraid of an 8-8 eight eight season. They're not, they're not afraid of, of it, man. They, they don't care. They'll take an 8-8 eight eight season if it was the NFL. They'll take it. They'll take it. Okay. I because take it that's just be- mediocre. Well, it's just you, you're probably not going to make the playoffs, but you definitely – you're still hanging in there. You'll be back next year, you know, to cause the same – to run the same plays and try it over and over again. I mean, I and understand what, the playbook. You know, everything we're seeing now, everything we're seeing now, I've been warning everybody I know about for a long time. And it's just the individual and the mindset. And a lot of these, you know, these Democrat – voters they're all just kind of victimized by all this and uh it's just the government uh the the democrats and the senate and the house and all over washington and that beltway they're the ones that i have a problem with and uh they're the ones trying to you know treat us all like puppets and they're control freaks you see it as soon as biden thinks he's and got it in the bag. He's like, all right, right away. You got people like Ocasio-Cortez and, you know, Rashid Tlaib and all these, uh, 
Ilhar Omar, they're like, okay, let's take, let's reduce, uh, what can we do? What can we do? Okay, military spending, slash it by 10%. We could be using that money for BLM, you know? Uh, okay, 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 let's, let's do a shutdown. This is how we're real. We're going to beat this thing. Well, ultimately, we are. People are socialists, and their goals is just to turn America into a socialist country. And even in it's, look, it's 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 their solution to everything. Look, they, 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 they those are all those are all facades. Those are all shell games. Those are all just uh, affronts uh, for for their real plan. You know, when they talk about uh, the green green new deal, global warming, how do we solve climate change? Oh, well, socialism, socialism will fix climate change. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. how do we solve, how do we solve, whatever, uh, what the fuck else do they want to solve? Racism. Oh, socialism will fix racism if we just take everybody's money and give it to other people. How to fix everything. Uh, how do you fix, uh, what else are they trying to fix? What, are they, what else are they trying to fix? The um, what the fuck else is wrong? What the ozone, the everything. They're trying to fix it all. It's socialism, almost like, socialism, it's, socialism. Rub, rub. it's almost like they, it's almost like walking into SeaWorld or somewhere at Universal Studios. It's like, where do we go? What do we do? You know, you get the pass, you're in, oh, what do we do? What do we do? You know, that's them when they get a little bit of uh, control, a little bit of power. It's just like, all right, what are we going to do? What are we going to change? I break off people from those groups. <laughs> uh, affirmative, affirmative. Yeah. Um, so, you know, these people, they, you know, maybe the intentions are good, but, you know, I just think the ideas are out of control and uh, a lot of, you know, just like when BLM was was in the streets busting skulls and setting place on fire, you had Kamala Harris congratulating them. She went and saw who was the disgusting uh, Blake. Who's the one guy? Blake, oh, the uh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She went and saw. Um, what was his uh, full name? Blake. Oh, Blake. Uh, it was um, Blake. <clears throat> Well, either see, way, see, that's, you know, the whole and this is the whole point. Either itself. way, this is the whole well, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Who since, are these people? Nobody whole, knows these people. They're Jacob going Blake, was months Jacob and months Blake? and months. Can't even remember their but, names. But listen, you know, the, the poor guy got shot up. But like, you know, in the hospital, Kamala Harris went and visited him and told him he was a hero. I mean, the guy has a lot of problems. He's in and out of jail. He has warrants out. As I understand he, it, he's a rapist. Uh, you know, the, the, the guy doesn't deserve an award. He doesn't deserve a visit from a vice presidential candidate. Maybe go see the cops. You mean Maybe presidential go candidate? Vice presidential. Oh, presidential. was she presidential candidate at that point? No, she was vice presidential. Oh, oh, you mean, oh, I was being serious. Kamala. But you're the right. Vice she presidential is, candidate. Right. She, Joe Biden. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. They're they're egging <laughs> this stuff on. They they are promoting it, and then they have the sports. I you know these people in the sports. You know if they want to keep their games going and they want to keep sports going, they're going to spread that BLM message. Did you see the Steelers? Everybody out there on a Saturday, that stands empty and been and they gave their message. You know, the night before, people were getting their freaking heads bashed in. It's not a real message. Oh, what the hell are they doing? And then Drew Brees, he tried to say he was against it, and he almost lost his job. I'll tell you what. It's, you know. Well, so all then, you can, then all, you know. They, they, all you can do is be aware of this stuff. That's all you can do. So who almost lost his job for speaking out? Drew Brees, he he caught a lot of shit, and then the next day he had the Jacob Blake, the Blake right on his uh, helmet. Yeah, that was his name. People couldn't believe it. People could not believe it. The guy was a criminal. Yeah, he he got in an unfortunate incident with the police. He's no one to be hoisting on the on our shoulders. People and, need to just uh, learn to live. Kamala stuff. Harris went themselves stuff so far away. She's a sicko. She's a sicko. She's a sicko. She doesn't belong in this position. She's a troublemaker. She's a prosecutor. Her job is to I thought you were going to say people prostitute. over. She's a prosecutor. Her job is to fucking nail you to the cross. That's her, that's her job is to yeah. just and they love put it. you away. That's her job. And she probably got caught up in that over the years. These process, some of these prosecutors, they get kind of prosecutor heavy. Yeah. And they happy. just prosecute, prosecute, prosecute. Oh, this guy, you're you're going in, you're going in, you're going in. Well, I've experienced. And I heard it she has a bad record. Family. I heard she has yeah. a pretty bad record. 
uh, as a prosecutor, state attorney prosecutor. Yeah, they um, state prosecutors. They just they just want to do the you know. They, it's like it's a game for them. They just want to hammer away. That's their job. Is just to is like a blacksmith with just with a hammer, just a hammer, hammer, hammer. And they just want to hammer as much as they can. I've you know at least at least the ones that I've encountered um that i've that i've uh, had uh, experience with or secondhand experience with and uh you know seen the experiences uh, with uh, so, um victrix there is uh something else going on let's talk about voter fraud let's talk about voter fraud and obviously voter fraud is a big deal so what's you what you watch cnf you, you conduct a lot of espionage over there i mean i'm i'm it's it's on the cable it's on the cable. Right, news. right. Can okay. So can you yeah. can you can you tell us what's going on? Is that anything? How do they? How are they over there? Um, are they sure that Joe Biden is the president? Or are they just trying to reassure people? I on, honestly, I haven't checked in with them in a little in a few days or Couple, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking for like the past 24, 48 hours. Yeah, you know, honestly, I think they're being cautious. I, I think they're a little worried. Everybody's a little worried on that side. And to be honest with you. They aren't celebrating. To be honest with you, <laughs> when you see that head, That's the you Trump better face. be worried. That's yeah. the Trump face. Let me tell you something. When you disrespect that head, that head shape, that hair, okay, yeah. the face, he, he doesn't disrespect. See, that's, what, that's when you piss Trump off is when you disrespect him and he didn't d- disrespect you. There, there's, no, there's no reason for it, and he doesn't yeah, like that. he was that. a nice guy. He doesn't right. like that. He is a nice guy. Yeah, he treats people nice. The guy came out and, and, and just made the economy, just set it on fire. It's the only way to fix anything is if everybody's working, making money, spreading it around, creating jobs. That's how people get lifted out, man. Create the opportunity. That's what Trump is. He's an opportunity creator. Stay tuned, folks. I'm going to sign off here, Rob, on these closing arguments. And I just want to say, folks, follow Trump's lead on this one. That's what we're going to do. And Trump, we trust. I'm going to follow Trump's lead. 100%. The voter fraud, it's happening now. It's happening. We're watching it. It's it's in, it's unfolding in front of our eyes. You get these updates about it, you can't even believe it, but it's real. The news is at every turn they they're telling you, oh, not looking good, not looking good for Trump. That's what I've been hearing every day. But then when I hear Trump's camp, they're coming out, boom, oh, Trump wins North Carolina, boom, Trump wins Hawaii, boom, oh, Pennsylvania throws the votes out after the closing on election day, boom. Yeah, Trump all these wins. snowflakes boom. are going to be mad. <clears throat> So Trump's working. Do not think for one second that Rachel Maddow has information on Trump before Trump has it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's Donald Trump we're talking about. He's working. And you've seen him today. Go watch the press conference. He just had it. It's his second time being in public. He came out. He took care of business. He's ignoring all questions. He's working. Let Trump do his thing. We're looking for a, a second term with Trump. Folks, it's the program. I'm signing off. Rob, take it away. Take it okay. away. Okay, Victrix, thank you very much. So it was where um, they are going to require people to text the government for permission to leave their home to New Lawn because because everybody's dying, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, if you if you live in I mean, up in the street, there's people having funerals. You know, the morgues are backed up. Everybody you know is affected by this. It's horrible. We have to get it under control. Ladies and gentlemen, wake the wake the fuck up. Wait, ladies, wake the fuck up. It's now it's nowhere. Where is this? How you can look, folks, you have to some we have we have to stick together and have cur okay. Here's how you fix this. You say fix everything. Here's how you fix it. Take off the masks. You take off Okay, so 47 13, ladies and gentlemen, how you fix it. Got to put on the uh, Amazon Prime shopping list a new uh, USB cable for this damned microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, how you fix it is you take off the masks. The masks are the symbol of uh, submission. I mean, it's how everybody knows. It's how you know that you're a slave. It's how they know that you're cool with it. What the next step, ladies and gentlemen, whatever that is, I promise you it's frightening. I promise you it's fucking horrifying 
horrifying. They can proceed when everyone's wearing masks. When everyone is wearing masks, everyone is complicit, compliant, submissive, plugged into the collective mind, the collective unmind, the collective unconsciousness. That's when consciousness disappears, ladies and gentlemen. That's when humanity disappears. Look, it is the, it, it is the eventuality of untethered, unfettered government that it just likes to destroy people. I promise you it is. That's why we have to have a constitution that binds government in chains, keeps it from going to that end. Okay, Government provides a framework in a limited fashion. But if you just let it go, unbridled, just it will take over. It will eliminate you. I don't know why. It's evil. It, it, maybe evil loves to use it as a vehicle. Maybe it's just the most natural, easiest way. Because evil hates you, hates humanity, hates people, people who agree to give some control over their selves, their lives to government in order to form a society. Well, it's a perfect vehicle for evil. You've agreed already. It has to be controlled. It has to be controlled. And this has to end. You talk, People who are wearing masks probably are the ones who preach this science all the time. Listen, I'm a scientist. It's not science that you're practicing. It's a religion. Do you care about evidence or don't you? All the evidence suggests you're being lied to. This thing is supposed to be scary. Where the fuck is it? It shouldn't be this hard to convince me there's a danger outside. It's like trying to say I wouldn't run out of a burning building. Show me something, if you can. I dare you. Thanks for watching the program, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>